Hey, it's Tim. I just wanted to do a very brief video showing other creators that thumbnails for YouTube don't have to be this elaborate process that you sometimes see YouTubers um, who have bigger channels who make only one video a week uh, sort of talk about. You see, I have a YouTube channel where sometimes I need to make a video every single day for a short period of time because there might be an event or sometimes I need to make a lot of thumbnails but I need them to have the same style and effect. So what you're looking at here is the chaos of my thumbnail creation process and I just want to show it to you in, in, in full view because I think it's really important to show people that there are other ways of doing things that maybe don't get the same high level sort of quality results that might appeal to millions of people but still do work for very small channels and growing channels most importantly that need to have a consistent style and look. So here we are. <clears throat> I'm doing this in Figma, so Figma is free, and the great thing about this is that it works in the browser. And so here, you can literally see all the assets that I've, I've used to make thumbnails over time. And what I do is I don't delete them. Any asset that I use, the chances of me using it again are quite high, so I tend to keep them on the canvas in some place or form. Now, what that means is I've got a bunch of different assets that typically go into a thumbnail. So just to show you this, I've got my uh, images here on the left. What I did with these is I took a picture in front of a green screen and then I ran them through a uh, Photoshop action that basically removed the green screen. I, I read a blog to set that up and then I just literally shoved all the photos in a folder and I said, look, apply the green screen effect to these photos and it extracted them for me. And so I just have them here on the canvas so that I can essentially drag whichever one I want into the thumbnail. And it still makes it look like I've got different ones. Uh, a, a key thing to note here is you can see that I've got um, I've got them in, in different sort of, sort of t-shirt size and anything that didn't work, I just delete. So you can see their gaps here. Those are because those are deleted and it didn't actually work at all. I never used them, so I got rid of them. The next thing I have is uh, essentially a bunch of icons. So I bought uh, some royalty-free icons. Well, I bought some icons, not royalty-free, because otherwise they wouldn't be. Uh, um, I wouldn't have to buy them. But anyway, I bought some icons and I essentially put them on the canvas. Um, I'll put a link to the icon set. But essentially, I bought an icon set that I can use. And icons are really handy when I just need to add something small to the thumbnail to make it look a bit different. And then I've also got some product-specific thumbnails. So if you've got logos, you know, brand icons brand identities. I've got those for the product I talk a lot about, which is Tableau, and I've got them on the canvas in case I need to bring those in. And then if I zoom into this, this is where things get a little bit crazy. You can see that there's it's just one big mess. And the main thumbnail that I use is actually this one here that I've got my mouse over that I'm highlighting. That's the main style that I use. But you can see that it's a repeated style across different uh, setups. So what I've been able to do here is think about the whole style and then see how it changes for different types of software I might make videos for in the future. And that allows me to sort of uh, create a thumbnail style that I know will work with other designs and styles and I can sort of test those styles then commit to the thumbnail design before I move forward. The other thing uh, that I'll sort of uh, show you here is I've also got other assets. For example, uh, you might you might be familiar with uh, things like LinkedIn. I've got a LinkedIn thumbnail, um, actually not a thumbnail, a LinkedIn header here on the page. So the reason it's here is because all the assets, everything is here. So this Figma file has actually sort of just become the canvas for all the stuff that I make the specific to the channel. I've even got the uh, header images up here at the top uh, I think if you look at this one, this is the actual page banner that YouTube uses and it kind of cuts out what it needs to. And so everything here is positioned. You can kind of see the, uh, the, the, the sort of cutouts appearing on screen depending on the different device layouts that we've got. So um, this is essentially how it's all done. The only other thing I'll sort of highlight is, you know, maybe let me just show you how a thumbnail sort of comes together. And what I've done is I've just gone and found plugins in Figma that work really, really well. So let's say I'm doing a thumbnail for this video. Uh, the first thing I do is is I'd uh, go and edit the text. So I'll, I'll, we'll come up with some sort of title. And the nice thing about this is because I just need to double click and go in there. I can just type whatever I want really quickly without having to go and mess around with Photoshop effects and sort of get used to that. Now, Photoshop could do all of this, but I think this is just much faster. And the key thing here is I can also do this in the browser because Figma is free and works in the browser. And so what I can do is I can say, um, this is a new uh, thumbnail. Great, and we'll worry about the background in a second. Um, check it out. 
And so you can see that's all done. And then all I do is I go and get the spacing for this line and I just drag it out. I go get the second one, I drag that out. And then this sort of uh, bottom red section is like a, a call out, a theming. It tells people what this video is about and the sort of the subsection of the video, if that makes sense. So if this was, for example, a tutorial about thumbnails, I'd just say YT thumbnails. Yeah, but the title is specific to the video. So this uh, red one is specific to the theme and there we go. And now you can see here I've got different icons. Now these icons were taken from the product I was talking about, but I can just move them off canvas and they come off canvas. And this is the reason why I keep everything off canvas. Now you can see as I move this one, the little uh, speech mark kind of went with it. So you can see that I accidentally embedded it in the wrong place. I can go ahead and put it outside and now I can sort of drag that a little bit more freely. We'll actually take the face off as well. We'll just bring it out here and now we've got like a completely vanilla uh, thumbnail. Now let's say this is a new thumbnail. I want to do something cool with it. Uh, let's go get an image I've not used. So let's go get this one. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put this in here. And uh, what we'll do is once we've dropped it in, I'll just go back here and then what I tend to do is I like to do a little bit of spacing. You can see there's a little bit of green uh, green screen spill on the right hand side, but you know the size of these thumbnails are done, it doesn't really matter. So what I'll do is I'll just drop it there. And then the next thing I like to do is some effects. So let me move my face to the right here and just go to the effects and we'll just do a drop shadow. And I, you know, some YouTubers do this white sort of outline. I don't like that. I'm sure there's a way you can do that here in, in Figma, but I just like actually to, to sort of have some semi-realistic effects so I'll just go in here drop a shadow and I'll just make it really bold because what that I think makes it feel like is that I'm actually in front of the thumbnail it just gives it a little bit of depth and it separates me from the sort of topic on screen so it creates like uh, there's the sort of three planes of, of, of context you've got me you've got the text and then you've got the background and then the icons are normally very sort of small additions this is um logic I got from a post from Netflix where they talked about their thumbnail design and they talked about this concept of having three kind of focal points and so now that I have that this is a pretty good uh, thing now because this is a thumbnail we probably want to go bring an icon so I have an icon just there there and I'll drop that icon and it's not quite popping out so what I might sometimes do is I use the drop shadow on it but I'll set it to white and then we'll sort of move it off and you can kind of see it's working so what we'll do is we'll we can change how much it blurs so if I bring it right in you can see that it just has this sort of glowing effect and that sort of sits nicely and I think that's pretty much that done uh, we can pretty much zoom out and then I like to sort of zoom out to this size just look at the thumbnail from here and see does this look good or does it look bad and I zoom in again and I check it out and I think hmm, maybe this this could be more prominent this could be easier and this this sort of uh, white space here this sort of empty space I, I like to fill that with something so what I might do is I might drag another icon in there just make that a little bit larger and that is it for my thumbnails I like to keep them very very simple actually they're they're pretty sort of standard and this design has iterated over time. So once I lock something in and I like it, it stays on the canvas. And when I come in and edit the thumbnail, I do the same thing. Now to export the thumbnail, all I do is I select the uh, canvas in Figma, select export tab, uh, tablet Tim thumbnails, and then I export all my thumbnails to a set folder in Dropbox. I put them there because I need to be able to access them. And then I'll call this uh, test thumbnail. And we have uh, the thumbnail. So if I hit save, that's the thumbnail save, 1080p, we're ready for YouTube. And there you go. That's a really quick overview of how to get good looking thumbnails without any of all this sort of fanfare. And um, because I think when you're a small channel, like you could spend an hour on a thumbnail, or if I dare I say it, you could spend maybe an hour making two more videos that could equally get you more viewership and more engagement. Thumbnails are important, don't get me wrong. But I think sometimes you have to strike a balance of how much time makes sense versus uh, the content and being consistent with your content. And so I hopefully this, this approach helps you kind of create more thumbnails, better thumbnails, but also stay consistent because for some channels, having consistent style really matters, especially if you're an education channel like mine. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.